I have a thought about that. I've been in America for 50 years and I've been only three times back home. And the last one was 2003. For me, the relations between our history and today is nostalgia, missing homeland that I cannot go. I'd say it's very similar for me. Um, I have been, I've left, left Istanbul in 1979 and went back in 83 and haven't been back. Um, and to me, the, the call of um, the places where my family and my uh, ancestor grew, grew and lived is very, very strong. But there is this still a big gap, if you will, um, between where I am and where that place is. And that's a constant tug with a lot of barriers. And for me, it means uh, once upon a time we shared the same land and we have similar cultures, but then it, uh, it's gone and we are talking about something else. Uh, and it's not very uh, easy to talk about uh, for many Turks. Uh, I was born in a uh, very old neighborhood in Antep and it used to be an Armenian neighborhood. So when I was a very small child, even four and five years old, I was uh, uh, I was listening about Armenians because all the houses were Armenian houses. So we were talking about some group uh, and Ar Armenians, but there were no Armenians around. So it was uh, it was my first uh, contact with this Armenian Turkish relations. I remember one page in my uh, history book there was a uh, this famous uh, ship uh, with which Atatürk went to Samsun uh, on that page it's in front of my <laughs> uh, my eyes now uh, there was a paragraph depic depicting uh, Greeks and I was so afraid of Greeks that uh, I told myself that oh god uh, Please uh, don't put any Greek uh, across my <laughs> road in uh, ever in my life. So they're so uh, that creatures, uh, and even uh, in my dreams, the, the Greeks are so bad people. I was afraid of Greeks. That uh, the, the thing is similar for Armenians. The all uh, you know about our uh, education system. We imposed some uh, thoughts, and later, in university uh, times, uh, I was come across with different groups, uh, different uh, ethnic groups, and at the end, I was married an Armenian. <laughs> <laughs> so you already experimented the Turkish Armenian relationships, yeah. beginning with your marriage. Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> I'd say for me, it's been a, a process. Um, growing up, my grandparents were active um, as survivors of the genocide to give their families story. So it was always part of my family to, to hear their their journey, um, uh, whether through Derzor or, or um, through Syria into Lebanon. Um, and so this idea of, of perpetrated of this human rights atrocities perpetrated on us as a people um, was very much something I, I in my family. Um, and so I grew up to be involved in uh, genocide commemorations, um, marches and so forth um, with the knowledge that the genocide was perpetrated by a different government, not Turkey's current government. 
Um, and then came the realization that the current government has a, has a policy of denial. And so although not perpetrated, although not murdering Armenians by one by by not acknowledging it, by not giving us justice through whether by, by starting with um, uh, acknowledging the acts of the previous government, um, there was this continuation of, of genocide. My personal awakening came very, very late, actually. My late 20s, maybe early 30s, when I came to the United States, the reality about Armenian, Armenians, Armenian genocide and everything. I grew up in Zonguldak, a coastal mm -hmm. town in, in Karadeniz region, and obviously I had no contact whatsoever with any Armenians. But when I went to Istanbul to go to middle school, there was a kid named Eddie. Apparently he was an Armenian, I didn't know. Uh, and in our class we had uh, Jews. Uh, there were more Jews actually than Armenians. And I rem the very first thing I remember, which I still remember today very vividly, that some, some of my friends making a comment about Eddie, comparing him to my Jewish friends, Lori and Rosette, saying that Lori and Rosette are fine, they are Jews, but Eddie is an Armenian. So my Turkish friends were saying this. I, I didn't make any sense of the depth of this, the terribleness of this, until I came to the United States, finally getting to know a couple of Armenians, hearing about different aspects of Armenian issue and Armenian genocide and whatnot. Growing up in Turkey as an Armenian, the relationship between Armenians and Turks, to me, had all the power on the Turkish side. As an Armenian in Istanbul, I had nothing. I couldn't say anything, I couldn't, you know, debate, question, etc. I just was, yes, and I knew what I knew, which wasn't really a lot because my grandparents didn't really talk much about it other than some terrible thing happened. When I left Turkey and when I came here and found myself in a different environment and honestly started learning more of the history that I didn't know, uh, and I wasn't also in an environment where I was pressured not to talk about it, I saw the power start to shift in that relationship. So I could have a conversation, a more honest conversation with, um, with a Turkish friend here than I could in Istanbul, in, in Turkey. So having grown up in a small village in Anatolia, you don't grow up with biases. But then again, when I came to Istanbul, I was educated in a Turkish school for two years and I got kicked out of there because the other kids, again, I'm talking when I'm 11, 12 years old, I want to play with my friends and then um, they used to call me Gabor, where you're not going to come into our game and then one of them punched me I punched him back and then we ended up at the principal's room and the principal started to slap me instead of slapping both of us mm -hmm. I remember now I'm only 12 years old and I don't have the comprehension of the brain to analyze the situation like an adult say he's my teacher or principal I took that to the heart and and then I yelled, I swore at the principal, of course, and they kicked me out of the school. Ever since then, I said, as soon as I get a chance, I'm going to leave this country. I'm 12 years old. What happened to the, these people was a question. Uh, sometimes come, come to our minds and sometimes we talk about it. And uh, our grandmother, my grandmother, my grandfather, uh, actually he was a warrior during the independence war of Antep. Mm -hmm. So he, he knows uh, the issue very well. And they didn't talk much about it. They just said they've gone. Uh, later, uh, during school years, of course, we uh, were told about all minorities, Armenians, uh, Greeks, and it was not very positive. We cannot change the past. We have no time machine to change the past. But we should remember it, feel bad about it, learn a lesson and not repeat it again. So, um, I've been here 45 years, but my kids might be different, but I still cannot get rid of my culture that I was born in. I like Chikhefta, I like the Turkish jokes. What do you want me to do about it? 
So, if there's some higher powers, they brought me to this world in, in an Anatolian village. It's not my fault. I'm not going to deny my Turkish ancestry, origin, or cultural, cultural origin, I mean. So, I res with all respect to Armenians that are, that are too keen, one-sided, bias history of theirs, I, I disagree with them. If history teaches us most of the things that's going to happen, unfortunately. It repeats itself. Our history in Turkish history has been every 10, 15, 20 years a hardship on the minorities. During World War I, the Ottoman Empire got into war. This is a state that's spending money for weapons and their budget grew. Their income grew. How that can happen during a war? From the Armenians, from the Greeks. Massacre them. Take every gold, coin, whatever they had, and kill them. No witness. This happened to my own family. We are ignoring history. That is our blind spot. Are you advocating that it can happen in the future? Yes. It's happening right now. Not in Turkey, somewhere else. All of it, just look around. We Armenians, we live with fear. We grew up with fear. Why do you think our grandparents didn't talk about it? Mm -hmm. Shush, shush, they can hear you. They can kill you. That's how we grew up. My father didn't tell me what happened. He was talking with my uncle. I was playing uh, marbles on the living room, on the carpet. I could hear what they were saying. Then I did read about it. But we are missing the big picture. We're not looking at history. And you're talking about starting from the bottom? Yes, the bottom is history. You go to school, you don't read the right thing. You think you know everything. You don't. I think we have to educate ourselves, our children, and the generations to come. But you cannot deal with a country like Turkey where they have all that prejudice because they're brought up like this. They're reading this I book. I understand. You've pointed out the wrong, but the question remains is still on the table. Who's going to change it for the future? It said that we cannot cultivate our minds beyond our prejudice. It's all in our hands. It depends how we educate ourselves. I, I brought this in case anybody wants to see it later. The Turkish history book and what it says about what Armenians were, how, what the traitors they were. And this is taught today in school. We also know about land in, in Eintop and, and, and Kayseri. I, I never, it was never somewhere that I wanted to go, but we, we talk, there's talk about repatriation, about, uh, about taking back lands, and that was not something in my family or in my heart that I wanted. But recently, um, several weeks ago recently, um, there was a presentation about a trip of Armenians that had gone back to um, Kharpet, and the message was, we have to go back so that Armenians aren't these mythical unknown, they once lived here and didn't go back. It shows that we do care about our homes in Turkey, about our identity in Anatolia, about that blood, I mean, of being Armenian, but also means living in Turkey and being part of Turkey. And so this isn't this is new for me. I'm trying to I'm trying to work on, but um, my obligation to witness to 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 say I am Armenian, and it matters that I'm from Antep. It matters that I'm from Kai City. It matters that that is where I'm from. I say the only formula for the hundred years old problem is very simple: bury your dangerous weapons. That means pre-accusations, pre-judgments, assumptions. <clears throat> For a little while, forget your religions, nationalities, race, and ethnic backgrounds. Forget your 
your and their histories, forget all the world parliaments and governments, put them aside. Simply go, really go to each other's countries, homes, shops, mosques, churches, etc. Sit down and talk, just talk, like the two lost children of the same mother, Anatolia. Don't hold back. No hold back. Talk, but also listen about anything and everything with open hearts. Talk about your common food, your music, your traditions, memories, stories. Talk about yourself, your family, your children, your parents, your great-grandparents, and all else. See, my friend, how fast you will come to a just resolution. Once and for all, it's called dialogue. In memory of my friend, current think. A couple of years ago, I organized a, a, a panel about, it was the 100th anniversary commemoration of the Armenian Genocide in Framingham, and there were more than 100 people attended to that panel. Uh, I first had so many Armenians together and had a chance to interact with them, but what I was puzzled with, and maybe we can discuss this together too, that the Armenians that wanted to ask questions to the panelists that we had, we're all so much into the Turkish politics. They knew everything about the Turkish government, what they were trying to do, what they, and I was so puzzled. Uh, a little disappointed too, that so many people uh, on the Armenian side, if I may, uh, were so much into the political aspect of this, or the state aspect of it, and they were not necessarily thinking about what I was thinking back then. How to establish this human, human relationship and how to deepen those human relationships in order to get over the feeling that my earlier middle school friends had in their hearts. Uh, I was more interested in the second aspect than the first one, but I was hearing all these political comments coming to the panelists and to the panel in general and trying to change the politics in Turkey from outside. And I was, to be honest, a little disappointed at that time. I honestly find that very normal. Maybe Khan was surprised because he doesn't know the diaspora Armenians as well as I do. But that is very normal. They're yearning, they still think that they're, they have a, some sort of a relationship, touch with that ancestral land, even though it's in their thoughts. They're not physically in touch there, but they're yearning. So they think maybe the Turkish government is their government too, and they want to change the government. I, I wish they did that. Yeah. Then the, a few million diaspora would, uh, would support the democratic forces in Turkey. If I was a if I was a if I was a democratic minded Turk who wants a change, complete change in, in our government, I would love to have no help but the Armenian diaspora on my side. Personally. But uh, the third and fourth generation of Armenians in diaspora, are they care about Turkey? To a level, yes, they do. To a level. If if um, you think that you know. In order to improve the relations between Armenians and Turks, then there is the Armenia and Turkey relationship, which is a different uh, level still. Um, and whether you see it or not, you know, big elephant in the room is the genocide and the recognition and how to deal with it and what, what responsibility the Turkish government has. And so for that, there is a lot of effort to make sure to get the government to recognize what happened as genocide from the Armenian side. And in order to assess the progress there, you have to know what the situation is in Turkey. You know, when Erdogan first came in and, th and, and Hrant was speaking more openly about this and there were uh, workshops about the Armenian genocide, the entire diaspora stood up and took notice. And to see that 20, 30 years later, there is this opening and the conversation taking place in Turkey was very hopeful for the diaspora. And, and just as, you know, um, good that was to sort of see things go back after that. And obviously, Hrant's assassination was a big, um, you know, shock to the system to say, oh, we thought it was more open and you could speak about it and you could have dialogue, but when you do, then you're gone down. Personally, I look at Germany. It's a good example for our situation, what we're discussing. What they did, how they solved their historical problems with the genocide they had. Any Jew around the world goes to Germany, they have a job, they have an apartment, they have security right away. 
they haven't lost their dignity. Armenians, minorities in Turkey, they don't live with dignity. They're not proud as a human being. But it's also changing. Maybe small pace, but it's changing. I hope so. Um, there is again a power imbalance there. Talking people to people, from Armenians to Turks, I'm not convinced that on a big global uh, scale that there is much to be done or the ideas or the thinking to be shifted at that level. Um, Hrant did that and others do and that still happens. But to me the impact is small as opposed to, you know, ultimately if and when the government of Turkey says yes these things happen and it starts from the top that the uh, the thawing could be a lot faster than on a one-on-one to one. But the, 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 on the other hand, though, what you're wishing, you're right. But the problem with government admitting the wrongs of the history is counterproductive. Every government thinks of their advantages and disadvantages, minuses and pluses. It is big blow to the establishment of Turkish Republic. Number one, admitting what happened prior to 1923. Number two is number two is it's, it's like falsifying some of your heroes. Some of those heroes, some of those heroes, the, the the people that establish, along with Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, some of them Itati leaders, they were in the army massacres. Sure. So, you're taking the historical heroes and then making them villains or or murderers when you open up that Pandora's box. Uh, but one thing I'm struggling with myself. So I'm a parent to two daughters, six and ten year olds. And the next thing I think in my parenthood is to talk about them, to talk with them about the Armenian genocide, because so far they seem to enjoy being an American. They were born here, but also being a Turk, having a family and uh, visiting them in Turkey and everywhere. But I really need to find a way to communicate to them that you no, know, that's something that happened in the history that they have to face the reality that being a Turk and uh, that's that's a part of the Turkish history. Uh, and you know, coming to terms with it is is very important. That's that's my ne next task, I guess, to deal with that thing uh, as a way of communicating to them and helping them to deal with it. It's not an easy thing.